Sandy Valendi has been getting a little bit loud and obnoxious as of late. At first I thought it was just a chuffing manifold gasket. Then as it started to get louder and louder, I thought, oh, I've got a hole in the exhaust. And what it turned out to be is the flange gasket. Now because Sandy's got a Holden Commodore motor onto a Land Rover system, it's a mating of two different systems. And you can no longer buy this part, the Land Rover bit. So it looks like I'm going to have to make it. First thing to do is measure the distance between the two pipes. And that's 34 millimetres. When I'm measuring things, I often use an engraved ruler and drop the notch, well, drop the point of the dividers into the engraving, and that means that I'm exactly on the mark. So when the dividers say 34, they mean 34 millimetres. So what I'm doing now is marking it out on the bench, the centre diameters, well the, the centre between these two pipes. And we'll just make sure I've got the right diameter piped to do the job. My buddy has got an exhaust machine and he's made these two flanges for me which I'll cut to length and one of those will go onto each pipe and they just fit over like that. He's given me a collector which is nice, the collector is a pre-made part that you can put pipes into at any angle, or give or take, and uh, weld them up. Now here's a trick that I do to get a nice square line around a pipe. You get anything parallel, wrap it round tightly, make sure the ends meet, and you've got a straight line. So I'll just grab a pencil and draw around that line. And that's going to give me a nice line to cut with the one mil cutting disc on the grinder. I've got a chop saw but it's away under the bench and it just means getting it out. And it's got a fat blade and it makes lots of sparks. If you show these things for steps, the little one millimetre cutting discs are a great tool. But please be very careful with them. Wear all the safety gear and only use one quarter of the wheel. If you go past that 90 degree mark, you have a big risk of them digging in and they will just explode and bits fly everywhere. Very, very dangerous. Stay safe. Now this is a sliding bevel, and with that I'm going to be able to mimic the angle of intersection of the different pieces of pipe on the original one, and transfer those angles over to the one that I'm making. I'll set up one pipe as closely as I can to start with, and then I'll work on making the second pipe meet to it at that 34 millimeter piece. That second one's going to have to have a slight bend in it, so I'll cut a small section out of this pre bent piece of tube. I've got to the stage now where I've got to get that manky old flange off because it's getting in my way. There we go, I'll use that later. They actually get welded on to the finished thing. They rattle round 
and can't be removed but uh, are quite loose but <laughs> they're in the way while I'm doing it so I'm making it without them and then when I'm confident that it fits well I'll just cut my little tack welds and take my trumpet bell mouths off fit those flanges and then weld the trumpet bell mouths back exactly where they were you'll see what I mean when we get there line this up and I think I'm just going to scratch over my lines and make them a little bit easier to see with a pencil the general idea is I guess cut the pipes to somewhere close fit the whole thing together tack it in two or three places take it out to Sandy test fit it, make any changes that need to be done, then fully weld it. Then weld the fully welded piece onto the pipe. It's time consuming when you're doing custom work like this. That's a bonus if you get it right first time. This is a deburring tool. The little sharpened hard hook in the tip revolves round and round so that it can adapt to any surface and you use it for deburring the edge of uh, sheets that you may have cut or the inside of holes like this when you've cut them with the cutting disc you'll have a burr on the inside this removes it quickly and easily Now all the pieces are deburred, I can start welding. I'm just going to tack each piece in two or three places so that it can't move. With everything lightly tacked, I can then move it into the position that it needs to be to get that 34 millimeters between the two and actually it's smack on right now and also I can make sure that everything is parallel and flat now that I've checked it's flat and the right spacings I'm going to take it outside and give it a test fit well that seems to fit happy with that, it's falling nicely halfway between the sump and the chassis rail, it cleans, it clears the starter motor and it'll be a bonus if it's on the right angle to join up with the Land Rover exhaust system. So there we go, right it's now clamped up and I'm welding it, I'm happy with how it's sitting, this clamp holds it all and stops it wandering while I weld a little bit here and a little bit there you don't weld the whole thing in one place at one time because it will go walkies on you even if it moves by one or two millimeters it's not going to uh, allow a good seal so now I'll just uh, wire buff the dingleberries off Now I've removed the flanges and I've removed the bell mouths and put the new flanges on and well re-welded them. And you can plainly see here why one is 20 millimeters shorter than the other 
that's because this unit fits in between. It's redundant now, it's part of the cold start mechanism on the Commodore, but uh, it's not needed, so I don't use it. But there we are, all nice and flat. Everything's parallel. I really don't want hot metal dropping down my collar. So I'm only going to weld enough to hold it in place and then I'll unbolt it and lower it down so I can weld all the way around. Welding underneath vehicles is really awful. This should be enough to hold it. So I'll now drop it down, buzz all the way around, and then I can seal up the flange and the job's done. I've put stainless steel nuts on the exhaust flange so that next time I have to service it, it'll be an awful lot easier. Yeah, Sandy's been getting a little bit loud and obnoxious while I've been driving through town and it's gradually got worse and worse until it's got to the stage where when I decelerate going down a hill I've got snap crackle pop coming out of the uh, flange here which certainly attracts attention It's a job I've been meaning to do for several weeks, but it's just got worse and worse. And there's some things that had to be done. But I tried the easy way. I tried just purchasing the part needed, but they stopped selling Holden Commodore parts for this model Commodore. Uh, about 10 years ago, so these things just can no longer be bought and I couldn't find anybody who wanted to make one for me, so I had to do it myself Right, it's on. Let's give it a start, see how it sounds. That's better.
I'll leave that running for a while and the heat will set the exhaust cement that I put in there. But um, I think we can call that a done job. I can get back on with Brutus now.